So today on Coffee Geek, we're going to be looking at a different way to use a press pot and to brew press pot coffee. It involves uh, a bit from the cupping world, a bit from a technique that Tim Winnebo, the 2004 WBC champion, used, and I'm about to show you how to do it. Okay, now we're going to measure out the coffee. I'm using the Insnama, in, in <laughs> I can never pronounce that correctly, coffee from uh, Guatemala from Intelligentsia Coffee. And uh, normally you use seven grams of coffee for a press pot. Uh, with this technique, I up it by two grams per cup. So uh, I do roughly nine grams. I'm actually going to be measuring out 35 grams here on the scale. You don't have to have a scale. You can use a tablespoon measure, which holds approximately seven, ground, uh, seven grams of ground coffee. And then you just add a little bit extra. If you're doing four, do like four and a half, almost five. So there I hit 35. Now the next step is to take this coffee and uh, grind it up. Okay, we have our coffee ground. I used a Baratza Vario grinder to grind this off camera. It does a really nice even job. So we're going to take the uh, plunger off of the press, put that off on the side because it's actually not going to be used for a while. And we'll add the ground coffee. Um, it's really important to have good particle sizes. I'm going to cover that a bit later. So that's in there and uh, now we're going to take hot water just off the boil so it's about 205 Fahrenheit maybe 200 Fahrenheit and we're going to completely saturate the grinds and agitate them and you want to pour it slow I'm actually pouring it a bit fast here I should be pouring it slower and you want to completely agitate uh, everything saturate everything and fill the water up to this amount and uh, next you're going to take a saucer could be any saucer um, and put it on top and you're going to let it steep now for three and a half minutes Okay, so while that's steeping, um, let's get into the details about what we're trying to do here and what's important. First and foremost is you have to use fresh roasted, fresh ground coffee. There's just no way around that. Your coffee will not magically taste great if you're using terrible beans. So make sure you use fresh roasted, fresh ground coffee. Then you want to make sure you grind your coffee to the correct size. Now what's the correct size? Um, the best way I can describe it is it's like the... Uh, sort of larger pebbles in the sand at most beaches. It's not as small as uh, salt or sugar particles. So that's what the size you're looking for. Then you want to use about an extra two grams per cup for whatever press pot you're using. And the reason why will become evident very soon. We're going to be removing some of that ground coffee near the end of the brewing process. So you want to start with more. You also want to fully saturate the grinds when you're pouring in the water. This is really important. Um, you want to pour the water nice and evenly and make sure everything is saturated and there's full sort of um, uh, agitation going on and the coffee's properly set up. And the next uh, thing you want to do is you uh, don't want to stir. Well, actually you can stir if you want to, but you only do it early on. And the reason why is we're going to be developing a crust of coffee and you don't want to disturb that later on, as you'll see soon. And the last thing is, is steep for three and a half minutes and that's a half minute less than the normal format steep and the reason for that is because we're still going to be doing a little bit of brewing at the end that accounts for that last half minute okay so we've done our three and a half minutes steep we're going to be removing the saucer now as you can see there's a nice crust developed on top and we're going to be taking cupping spoons here but and these are cupping spoons you can use household spoons now normally in a cupping uh, you break the crust uh, it's part of the process where you're releasing aromas from underneath the bed of coffee so you take the spoon in a certain action and um, sort of like wave it back and forth we're not going to do that we're just going to be scooping the coffee straight off so I'm going to get into that uh, you want to try to do it in as fluid a motion as possible get as much of the coffee as you can that first go now you can see on top of the coffee well once my hand gets out of the way uh, that there's a uh, sort of bloom, or as Tim Wendebo calls it, a scum on top. He likes to remove that too. I've experimented with it, and it actually, don't notice if it improves it or not, but I do it anyways. So I'm removing now the scum from the top, or the bloom. And uh, if you want, you can knock down some of this ground coffee. Uh, it, as long as it's not near the spout, it's not an issue for when you're putting the plunger on, you're pressing down. So we'll take the last of the bloom out. We'll grab the plunger now. And we're going to apply the plunger to the top and what's really cool about this technique is it's really easy to push the plunger down uh, there's almost no resistance as it goes down so we're plunging it down and uh, now the coffee is done and it's ready to serve 
But before we serve the coffee, I just wanted to show you quickly what the grounds look like that you've dumped off. Uh, not that much to see here, but you do remove about half of the coffee, as you can see. All right, now we are done and it's ready to serve. The, uh, the coffee is plunged, it's ready to brew. Um, the one really cool thing about this method too is that the coffee can sit in the plunger for an extra second or well, a couple of minutes and not necessarily brew any longer because a lot of the ground coffee's out. So it makes a nice clean cup, a uh, great way to taste coffee. It presents slightly different aromas and definitely a cleaner cup.